Hello everyone, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here, and today I'm talking about 10 books I read because of TikTok. So I typically get my book recommendations from YouTube. I'm a primary, I create content on YouTube. I love YouTube. I actually prefer long form YouTube content for book reviews and book recommendations just because you can get a little bit more information. Sometimes TikTok is so quick, you just get like the tropes and the title and the author. Not even always the title and the author sometimes. You just get the tropes and then we move on to another video and it's so quick. So it's enough to hook you, but it's sometimes not enough time to give you all the information you need. And so in this video, I'm talking about 10 books that I read because of TikTok. And we're gonna start with the ones that didn't work for me and move to the ones that really, really did. When I first started watching book content on TikTok, I was getting general recommendations. Like I hadn't quite honed my FYP yet. And one of the first things I saw on TikTok was Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Now, I really think Katie Robert is a rock star. I think she <laughs> is really, really cool. And the fact that she writes so much is commendable. She found her niche, she sticks to it. She's very uh, politically uh, minded and I just really respect her and her content. However, <laughs> Neon Gods is a Hades and Persephone urban fantasy retelling uh, romance. And this is just not what I'm looking for in romance. I want more romantic elements the, with the capital R, you know, the, the long walks, the holding hands, the getting to know you stuff. And this is just pound town and that's okay. Um, but it was just not exactly what I want out of my romance. Another romance that really didn't work for me is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I just think, I've read a couple, I think I've read two Allie Hazelwoods now, and I or three, and I just don't think, she, again, she's an author for me, you know, quirky main characters, I, I don't know, like sometimes they can work for me and sometimes they don't, and Allie Hazelwood is kind of known for writing these like manic pixie dream girl, quirky scientist ladies, and like, get your bag, sweetie, like stick to it if it works. But like, I just was rolling my, I like, I couldn't take it seriously. I think is the ultimate takeaway from my reading experience was like, I just, I, it I couldn't believe what I was reading. <laughs> I couldn't take it seriously. Uh, and that's never gonna win me over for a romance. And the sex scene was ridiculous in my opinion. Again, I couldn't take it seriously. I really enjoyed the mailman character, honestly, but not for me. Another romance uh, series that didn't work for me is Guild by Raven Kennedy. There is just so, this is a romantic -y series. And I understand that in the first book, we don't even get to meet the love interest that she ends up with, the end game person. So I, I, I understand that. However, there's so much gratuitous on-page sexual assault uh, that I was like, that I don't think was handled particularly well. Like uh, our main character could have, there, especially towards the end, there's a, an assault that she's just like watching happen and she has the power to stop it and doesn't. She lets it go on for pages and pages and pages and then, and then stops it. No. So those were all two star reads. This is a, a fantasy that didn't really work for me and I feel bad for not liking this one is The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ada Reed. And this is a fantasy steeped in Jewish folklore and I love that for this book. <laughs> Um, but to me, this is like also kind of has a heavy romance in it and I just really didn't buy it. And the second half of the book is completely different from the first half of the book, which again, for some people might really work, but really just like threw me off completely. It felt very side questy in the second half and I am just not really emotionally connecting. So I ended up giving this book like 2.5 stars. I don't think it was bad, but it just was not a fantasy, not, not the type of fantasy that I typically enjoy. 
last um, that you didn't really like uh, train is a book I did like, but a series I ended up hating, and that is The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. I loved The Atlas Six, the first book in the series. So I actually loved The Atlas Six, and then I ended up reading the sequel, didn't love it as much. And then the final book in the series I DNF because I was so annoyed. A lot of the things that I didn't like about the second book were more prevalent in the third book. So like this is one that I really enjoyed, uh, but maybe it sort of stayed independently published. I don't know if that was why the shift happened, but it just, yeah, didn't work for me. This is a Dark Academia fantasy series about six people trying to kill each other. Uh, in an academic setting and it's very pretentiously written and I enjoyed the pretension in book one but then it it, it just became stupid in book two and three like it got old quick. All right on to books that I enjoyed because of TikTok. Uh, the Outside by Ada Hoffman is about an autistic sapphic scientist woman who like accidentally causes a giant catastrophe and the like angel gods, angel AI gods of this universe, like help, help hold her captive. And she has to like, they kind of pose her a problem and she has to solve it. Otherwise she's gonna like be put to death and her girlfriend, they're gonna like kill her girlfriend. It is a wild concept. And <laughs> this was like some of the best sci-fi I've ever read. And I honestly, I feel so guilty about it. I really enjoyed this first book. I gave it four stars. I really, really liked it. Uh, and then I never got around to finishing the trilogy. Um, that's a shame. That's a really, a really shame because, and you know why it is? Because I didn't have access to the audiobooks. Maybe I should get the, the rest of the audiobooks though. Uh, but I really, really recommend this series. It is weird. It is wild. It is wacky. There's angels, there's AI, there's eldritch horrors. It's bonkers. It's bon it's just bonkers and I really liked it and so I kind of want to reread it and finish out the series. Then we have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming and this is a romance you see that is ridiculous. Not not that great in terms of its writing or world building. It's not like the most inventive thing but this was the some of the most fun I've had reading in a long time. I was just smiling. I was smiling the whole time. And you know, what more can I ask for? I just thought this was delightful. And like my, I honestly wanted to give it five stars just for the amount of fun I had reading this fa this fantasy romance. But like in good conscience, <laughs> I could only give this four stars because like it's not very well written to be honest. And they, they they talk very urban and colloquial in this medieval fantasy setting so it's like very off-putting in a way but I had a great time honestly I'm glad I picked this up on a serious note <laughs> we have the grace of king kings by Ken Liu and I read the entire Dana Lane dynasty because of TikTok recommendations and this is now one of my favorite fantasy series of all time like I I was screaming crying literally you know literally crying and clutching my chest um throughout the course of this series and you know now we're getting into a bit, a bit more of like when my FYP started actually reflecting more diverse reads and my reading taste a little bit more this you know we're getting closer and closer to like what I actually love uh to pick up and I'm so grateful like and especially this first book was kind of hard to get through. The writing is very off-putting and not very accessible, but I'm glad I stuck with it because this is, again, one of my favorite fantasy series of all time now. And this one's like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Legends and Lattes. This is the self-pub version. Um, I think, you know, when this book came out, I, like many other people, were craving for softness, coziness, um, something quiet, something escapist, something to get us out of the mental state that we were all in uh, at this time. 
and this just was a uh, again it was a situation where it was like the right book the right time this is a cozy fantasy story about Viv who opens up a coffee shop and she puts away her adventuring lifestyle to sell coffee and it's adorable it's sweet it's sapphic it's lighthearted it's fun and it's truly escapist like I really just um, again, it's, it was the right book, right time. I don't think this book is without its flaws or critiques and that's, you know, totally fair and I, I see them too. But again, it, it's kind of like red, white and royal blue for me. It, it's another one of those, like, I understand it's not perfect, but it was a, the book I needed in that moment of time in my life. Oh, I love this so much. And the audiobook is read by the author and he's an audiobook narrator. <sighs> on a slightly different note, <laughs> we have Tripping Arcadia by Kit Mayquist, uh, who goes by they, them pronouns. And this is a gothic horror novel about a woman who ends up becoming a medical assistant to a private doctor who um, is the doctor to this like billionaire family. And so our main character kind of gets ingratiated in this lifestyle and with these people. and. This is a perfect horror book for me. Ah, <laughs> I just, this is atmospheric. It's creepy. It devolves into madness. The character goes down this like very dark path. It was incredibly compelling. There's a romance in here that I actually really enjoyed. There's drugs, there's horrors of the wealthy and the uber wealthy. I just ate this up. And I don't think I would have ever found this book without TikTok. Um, there's like other fantasy books. I, you know, I'm on YouTube so much, I probably would have seen those books there. But like, I don't follow a lot of horror creators on YouTube or anywhere else. So I'm incredibly grateful <laughs> to the TikTok cr the creator that recommended this one. Because again, it's one of my favorite horror books of all time. Was that, was that 10? I have 11 on my list. Anyway, you're getting a bonus one. 11. Uh, the Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley is a literary sci-fi story about a man who doesn't have any memories. He's on a train station and he's confused and lost and we end up kind of figuring out what happened to him and there's sci-fi time travel-y elements and it's gay and I love this. This is like a, a literary sci-fi. I think I mentioned that. Um, and this is kind of one of my first instances of reading a literary sci-fi and this is a five-star read. Five-star read. Uh, it's got a little bit of like historical fiction elements to it because of the time travel, uh, but I thought the way this story was told, the writing, and everything about it was just so well executed and I ended up loving the journey that we were on. I really want to read more by this author and uh, again I don't think I would have found a literary sci-fi had it not been for TikTok and someone giving me a random recommendation for a queer sci-fi. Anyway those were 11 I guess books I read because of TikTok. I primarily still get recommendations through YouTube just because I need to do a little bit more research personally to figure out if a book is going to work for me or not. but. I think TikTok has its time and place. You know, I found some literal all-time favorites in this stack because of TikTok, and I don't think I would have found them in any other way. So I'm I'm appreciative of TikTok in that way. Thank you so much for watching this video. What did you think? What's your favorite book you read recommended by TikTok? I would love to know in the comments down below, and I will see you in another video of mine very soon.